though. We're going to spend a, probably way more time on your history than uh, than we probably should. But I am so intrigued with uh, the Tuskegee Airmen uh, in world. I'm a huge World War II buff. Um, ah. it, it, it's it's a passion of mine. So uh, I, I'm going to tell you a story. I was at a local restaurant. This is about ten years ago, maybe eight years ago, with my kids and with some friends. And this very very old couple come in and they sit behind us. And I mean. 90s right and so you can really tell and 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 you know the mom there she was just done to the nines and just to come out on a saturday afternoon and had breakfast and uh and or, or, or saturday afternoon have lunch and 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 the old man was there with him and he's wearing a world war ii cap and so i ask him as we're walking out and there's like 10 12 of us and i stop and i ask him and i was like where you know what did did you serve and and you know, when your eyes, when you're 92, 93 years old, you know, the eyes can get kind of milky and, 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 and kind of soupy the way that they do, you right. know, and, 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 and I saw this guy and when someone asked him this question, he stopped and his eyes lit up like, uh, in the way that we described it was, and I wrote a piece on it afterwards was like, I w like he was 19 years old again, 20 years old again, wow. flying through the air. And he goes on to tell us the story, his story. And he couldn't wait. He had a little, uh, he reached into his pocket and he kept him with him, a piece of paper like this. And on it, typed, the, typed to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, was his story and what he wow. had done. And he was, uh, and, 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 and I wanna, I, I'm going to try to get this right, but if somebody corrects me, that's fine. He was one of four pilots to shoot down a jet in World War II. So right towards the end of the war, the Germans had developed the jet technology right. uh, and jet engines, and of course that would have turned the turned the the, the the war significantly in their favor. And he was sent on a bombing run, and as he looked down in whatever part of Germany he was in, you could see shell after shell of jets as they just didn't have the parts to build the actual engines. Uh, and out of nowhere, this plane comes in and blew off, uh, uh, blew down three of his four. And he was able to take it down, and it was a jet. Uh, and so he told me that story, uh, and I have the utmost respect. My, my kids shook his hand. They understood what they were dealing with, what kind of person this was. And so just that guy at a restaurant on a Saturday afternoon had an impact. My son's going to go into the infantry uh, in the military. Still talks about that guy. Right. Wow. With this reverence. And so what was did you have an appreciation for what it meant to be a Tuskegee Airman and that you had that in your lineage? And uh, was there any stories or like so many did it kind of pass to history before you could take advantage of it? Well, you know, I, I as I said, I got to do that report way back when I was in high school. Um, and I did not know the significance of it back then, for sure. Uh, of course, now I understand yeah. uh, every, every Memorial Day and every, I actually did a post myself. I don't know if I posted it on the blog or just social media, but I did a post about um, whether or not I felt this almost guilt of wanting to promote and say his name over and over every time there's a military mention. But then I realized that's pretty selfish of me to think that, well, oh, because I don't have my own story of being on a battlefield that I'm just piggybacking on my, my generation. This generation did things that I could never do or not never need to do now right. because I, people are like my uncle EJ. So just to tell you the story of the parts that I do know, he was a World War II veteran. Uh, he was flying um, and the Red Tails was the Tuskegee Airmen. So there's actually a movie called Red Tails. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I heard that that's uh, possible. I know that the, the Washington team is thinking about changing their name possibly to the Red Tails. Uh, to honor the Tuskegee, the Tuskegee Airmen, it's a crazy, wow. it's really cool. But the the part that he played, uh, obviously as a pilot, he was a pilot, and then and he also flew in the Korean War, which is where he was shot down. He was a uh, missing in action, now conferred uh, KIA uh, as a um, as a as a Korean War veteran. So that's the stories that I was told, just of the fact that he was a part of this group. Uh, that did things that no other group of men was allowed to do. Mm -hmm. Just that's the thing, you know, to be able to fly in World War II, to be able to, I don't have, you know, his, I do read a service record every, every Memorial Day. I do post it. I post a service record. Uh, and now I can say in terms of my family, we have one of our, uh, my cousins is a Air Force pilot who has flown Air Force. I want to say Air Force Two. I don't want to put him too high. I don't know. He might be super, super, super secret, <laughs> but he, he is a pilot as well. And that flowed through 
uh, obviously that legacy. So uh, we have Air Force pilots in our family now, and my my uh, you know my children have been able to go to the Tuskegee Air um, the museum with my family to honor him. So they have been a part of it. I think again, I mean, the military obviously has so much uh, uh, honor, deserves so much honor. Yeah. That I do sometimes feel that how can I even give back? How can I serve in a way that they served or give what they gave? I can't. Right. All I can do is live in a way that honors their sacrifice. Yes. And that's honestly what I feel like. Again, when I look back at that, that, a, that generation, greatest generation, right? Um, I believe that that's the thing that we need to make sure we never let go of. Those, those, those guys are now, I think, the very few that are still alive in their hundreds. Um, we won't have those stories individually like you have with that 93-year-old. Like those right. stories, unfortunately, are never going to be able to be told person to person in just a, maybe another 10, 10 years or so. 